Our next guest is the Associate Professor of Religious Studies at uh, DePaul University, uh, and as well as a great friend of Revolutionary Spaces. Please welcome Sharon Osasei. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it. So uh, the, uh, the the Boston Tea Party, of course, uh, famously uh, was started by a meeting that took place in the old South Meeting House of Church. Uh, churches obviously have a lot to do with colonial life. Uh, how do you think people might be reading into reading things into that connection? One of the aspects of that question is is the relationship between religion and the revolution, and and I think it's important to talk about religion in a very broad sense. Certainly, we can talk about Protestant Christianity, and then bring in Catholicism into that conversation. But if we think about the enslaved population, for example, that lived in Boston, if we think about somebody like Crispus Attucks and the fact that, you know, this is somebody who had um, multiple cultures um, as part of his, his heritage. Uh, I think it, 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 it requires that we expand thinking about religion to not just Protestant Christianity, but also, you know, the, the religions, the cosmologies that the enslaved Africans would have brought with them to Boston. Now, having said that, that, that kind of broad introduction to, to religion, if we are thinking about Protestant Christianity and the ways in which we kind of read religion into the revolution or read religion out of the revolution, if we think about religion in some ways as kind of the, the subfloor for American society, one way to think about your question is, is, is on the one hand that Protestant Christianity provides this subfloor uh, for a kind of moral foundation for America. So kind of leading into the revolution uh, uh, religion is, is something that helps people uh, compromise. Um, it's, it's this social phenomenon that the founders are imagining will allow for there to be useful discussion um, in the midst of this revolutionary moment and, and that that discussion will help then frame a nation going forward. Another way of thinking about the significance of religion in the American Revolution is, is in some ways to kind of reverse the relationship. And so as opposed to this subfloor being something that, that really structures conversation and debate leading into the revolution, uh, kind of another interpretation is to think about uh, that subflooring as, 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 as a surface that gets profoundly transformed. And so in, in this way of thinking about the relationship between religion and the revolution, several political ideas, secular political ideas significantly transform the sources of authority and religious belief going forward, such that during the revolution and then coming out of it, uh, the way in which people think about religion, the way they practice religion, the way they think about the relationship between religion to government is, is in many ways uh, sh uh, uh, shifted. In general, is, is history helpful to society? I would imagine as a historian, you you would say it is, but can it also sometimes have a, a, a negative effect on society? Yeah, I, I think the short answer is that is that history is really useful. And I think one way to begin to open up that question is what we mean by, by history. And so one way of thinking about history is, is, is a certain platform of facts that are there, thinking about history in a kind of empirical sense. We have dates, uh, we have archives, we can in many ways corroborate things that have happened in the past. But certainly, and any historian would agree that, that one of the things that drives professional historians is the, the aspect, the art of interpretation. And so if we think about historiography or the debates that historians have amongst themselves, and then we in many ways link those debates, the debates that historians have between themselves, and we link those debates to the ways in which various kinds of historical stories get taken up and, and become both part of myth and part of ideology, then, then absolutely I think the history that historians do is really useful. And I also think that historians themselves are recognizing that the history that they do has to be in conversation with, with the way in which a broader public, if you will, is, is imagining the past and is talking about the past. And that, and that if you allow a gap to open up, 
between you know the work of, of professionals and the work of a broader public, I think the ways in which historians can influence various kinds of public debates uh, 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 becomes becomes less. So I mean, the Tea Party is uh, funny because it's you know it, after it happens, uh, the the founders wanted to ignore it, and and here we are in the 21st century where you have some Americans who, in the way they're imagining that, that event uh, and the, the events that led to it, they are imagining that it means something that speaks to contemporary concerns. And in the way they're making the Tea Party speak to contemporary concerns, they are certainly using many ideas that arise out of this revolutionary era. You know, what does it mean to be a community? What does it mean to be an individual within that community? What's the responsibility of an individual to a particular uh, community. Certainly, the, the meanings of those things are different today than they were uh, during the revolutionary era, but it, it, is, it is really interesting and I think critical to think about also the continuities in these ideas, ideas about natural rights or ideas about kind of civic virtue and responsibility to some kind of greater, uh, greater, greater whole. Why should most uh, Americans believe that the Tea Party or the revolution in general uh, were important to them. So, so it's it's a debate. Uh, you know, I I do think when I'm in the classroom, for example, trying to make the case to my undergraduates about the significance of of the American Revolution, and also in some ways trying to convey to them why I became really interested in this era. I do think there's something to say about uh, ideological continuity in history. Uh, I do think there's 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 a lot that can be gained even in a kind of comparative framework, if you're interested less in terms of uh, continuity over time, if you're, if you're gonna look at the revolution and look at how people were talking about community and how they were talking about individualism and to look at how over time, important shifts have changed in how we think about the relationship of individuals to, to uh, community. I, I think going back to the question that um, there's a lot to be said for thinking about a history in terms of giving us uh, an, an important perspective. And this isn't to say that uh, historical work gives us a blueprint for the future. Um, but I do think history can give us ways of, in reimagining the past, um, it can open up the ways in which we begin to imagine what's going on in our contemporary moment. Uh, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it. Oh, well, this has been uh, great. Thank you all. Uh